Yes, uh, I'm talking a little bit about accessibility today, mostly to see how that affects all these modern developments that we are now having with modern frontends and JavaScript, because that does change how you look at accessibility. So accessibility, it's usually abbreviated by A11Y because it's a long word, it has 11 letters and nobody wants to say it the whole time or write it down, and modern JavaScript. So the first thing you often ask is, uh, get asked like, isn't JavaScript bad? That was like the wisdom of the ages, like things need to run without JavaScript um, for accessibility reasons. You need to at least have a functioning site. Uh, but what if your site is generated by JavaScript? So yeah, we know things can be bad, Godzilla can be bad, but um, luckily that's simply not the case anymore. Um, so, we can use JavaScript uh, and be accessible. Um, it, it really is fine, it just needs to be accessible, JavaScript generated sites. Um, but yeah, it is 2018, screen readers can also deal with JavaScript. Um, and one of the most used tools by people that, uh, by for instance blind users today is a smartphone. They use smartphones as well, and smartphones do use JavaScript and understand JavaScript. So you can. A quick recap um, of what accessibility means, because quite often people think like, oh yeah, that was a thing with the contrast. Um, it's a bit more than that. Uh, it is for people with visual issues, so blindness, also color blindness, blurry vision, whatever but you also have to think about people with motoric disabilities. Um, if you make your buttons so small that on a touch screen, people who have difficulty pointing their finger can't point to them, uh, that's a problem. So motoric skills um, are an increasing, um, is something you have to take uh, into account as well. There's also cognitive, that also falls under uh, accessibility. So people who have difficulty understanding difficult ter terminology. So try to keep your interface uh, in simple English or whatever your language you use, um, because not everybody is schooled or has the ability to um, do that. Uh, it can be situational. Um, your site, you might think your site works wonders, uh, until you sit in Thailand on the beach uh, under the open sun and then you notice that your contrast really doesn't work. So, or in the park. Um, and more and more people are using websites and web applications on the go. So situational can mean, uh, accessibility can mean, well, um, in the metro you're supposed not to play the audio. So um, it helps if you have subtitles on your video so people can actually get your message without bothering all the other passengers. And increasingly, there you also have to encounter uh, or think about temporal issues. And tem but temporal, I mean, we live in a world where people get older and older. And uh, with elder, uh, old age comes a lot of wisdom, but also some health-related issues. Um, so you also have to take into care, uh, account that more and more of your users will have some kind of light uh, motoric issues or maybe visual issues. So if you want to design for a whole population, and believe me, elderly people are growing and they have money to spend. So it's a target audience, not only if you want to be good, but also if you want to be profitable. Um, you better take that into account. So what do we do with uh, these modern JavaScript things? We can, of course, just take an existing framework like React or Angular or Vue and hope that that's done. Then, then you're like, okay, other people's problem. Um, unfortunately, well, the, by the way, this is for people who are not Japanese. This is Gudetama. Um, he is a very lazy egg, um, and he has very existential problems. I love Gudetama. Um, so there will be <laughs> lots of pictures uh, of him. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot be lazy just by using uh, plain React or Angular, um, that's not going to cut it. There are new and unexpected dangers in app design. Um, just because, yeah, the, the paradigm is shifting, 
you have to be uh, aware of what you're doing. And more problematic that some of the tools that, you, uh, that we normally use to check for accessibility simply don't work on apps. Um, there's like a lot of uh, static linters that won't work. There's a lot of um, these checker websites that are stunted because they were written 10 years ago and they just won't check everything that you need to check. So you have to take that into account. Um, <clears throat> one particular thing that is difficult is the editing experience. And there is currently a big problem uh, on how not to do accessibility right, and that is uh, with our friends uh, in the WordPress community. Um, they are working on their new uh, editor called Gutenberg, um, which they're pushing through at an alarming rate. It's going to go into um, WordPress 5. Um, Although the lead of their accessibility team has resigned, um, the, uh, the rest of the accessibility team has said we are not endorsing Gutenberg um, because it's a disaster for accessibility. Um, but they basically they've said we don't care and we're pushing it through. And one of the major errors that they made was that the whole Gutenberg team was completely separated from their accessibility team. And so there was a big uh, uh, institutional disconnect and Gutenberg was designed without any accessibility in mind and that is something we have to do better when we choose our editors, please. Um, for instance, if you want to change the font size in a post but you're writing in Gutenberg, which is not a wildly strange thing to do, it will take you uh, 34 separate keyboard, uh, keyboard strokes if you know exactly what you're doing. If you ha have to look things up, it will take you 78 keystrokes to change the font into a slightly bigger font. That's not going to be helpful for a blind editor. They will hate you. So let's do better than that and let's fight the good fight. But yeah, the first time I looked at it, it was also, I looked at React and it is weird for an old person like me who is used to like, okay, we have HTML on here, we have CSS in there, and that was good because we separated concerns, and then somebody comes and says like, no, we're gonna smash it all together again. And you're like, ah, how is this ever gonna work? Um, because it just looks strange. But then luckily I started a bit with Gatsby and now I <laughs> worked a bit more with uh, Gatsby is like a good um, sort of startup drug to learn React because you don't have the full thing to do. Um, and it's actually doable. Um, one thing that is reassuring, and you can all do a little happy dance, if you just write semantic JSX, you will actually uh, get semantic HTML. So um, you just have to adjust your JSX. So JSX, by the way, is the uh, language that you write React in. Um, you just have to write it in a way that works better. And even uh, JSX uh, can work together with ARIA, so they can be uh, friends again. Um, so all the ARIA attributes, ARIA attributes are hel helper messages for uh, screen readers and for other assistive technology. They're all valid JSX uh, props, so you can actually put them in, and you should. Because, uh, because it is usually an app and uh, like a React, uh, an, an active web application, it needs uh, li uh, ARIA reinforcement. Normally for plain websites, the current recommendation is like avoid ARIA if you can because quite often you don't need it. But for interactive applications, you are going to need it. So um, what, uh, <coughs> what can we, what, I'll show some examples. Uh, first the bad one, so we have a, a sad tutorial, um, what not to do in JSX. Um, oh, oh, the Beamer is not optimal. Um, it says div and then navigation and then end div. Uh, I should have known that it was this, uh, then I could change the CSS. I'm not going to do that now. But basically, um, all it says here, uh, all the uh, React elements are wrapped in divs. 
which convey absolutely zero meaning. So, how to make a happy Totoro? A Totoro. This is the same thing, but then wrapped in, uh, for instance, a nav element. Uh, that signifies, I am a navigation. This, this helps screen readers to say like, okay, and an aside uh, uh, element is wrapped in an aside. So it actually knows, hey, I'm an aside, I'm not the main column. Um, this helps blind people navigate a lot easier. And also, <coughs> buttons are uh, using the HTML button and not div, because then you actually convey meaning. So be <coughs> aware, and this works kind of similar in the other uh, environments in uh, uh, Vue and others. Uh, if you wrap it, uh, make sure you use as much semantic HTML to wrap your components in, because they actually convey meaning. A particularly difficult problem is messaging, error messages, uh, success messages. Um, you have to fill in your email again because it doesn't contain an ad sign, Th those kind of things. Um, normally, what you would do is you use an ARIA announcer. You say uh, ARIA live, you say polite because you don't want to um, interrupt what the screen reader is currently reading, but you say, hi, I have a message, um, there's an error message or a status message, uh, whenever you have time, could you please read this? Um, and that's what you do in normal HTML. There's a problem in React. Um, if you do it just like that, it won't work. It will stay silent, completely silent, which is a big problem. Uh, the problem stems from the fact that only the uh, top-level component ARIA live region stays rendered. If you change uh, components in and out, the ARIA live region is re-rendered, but it's not automatically uh, given the focus. So, it's, yeah, there's just like, if you change something, if you, cha if you uh, uh, change your page, if you have a single page application, for instance, it won't announce it. So that's bad. And routing, that's the most painful one, routing does not get announced. So if you change a route in uh, React, um, it will stay silent. And a blind user will be in a completely different page than she or he was expecting because they were on that page before. Yeah. And um, they don't know where they are. So that's really bad. So what you need to do is focus, focus, focus. And what I mean by that is explicitly set the focus to the first H1 element or the element that actually tells the user, hey, you are now at the contact page or hey, you are now at the whatever route we have just reached. You have to manually, explicitly do that because React does not do it for you. Some more examples <coughs> of what is inaccessible and how to replace it with accessible. It's actually quite simple. A bear could do it or a kitty. Um, if you set the focus, please have some vi uh, visual indication of a focus too. Um, that helps uh, users who are using a keyboard. Um, that, uh, that helps a lot of users. So even though your designer might, uh, might somehow find that ugly. If, you have, if an element has focus, that should be visible um, in some way. And ask your designer to be more creative to make it beautifully visible, but it should be visible. Another thing is never ever just say an input type of text. Please attach an ARIA label <coughs> to it, or an HTML label, because the label gets read and uh, then screen readers know this is a label and this is probably an input form that I uh, should input. What you should also do, <coughs> never do is have a save button only be indicated by an icon because I can tell you most blind users are not very particularly uh, helped by icons because they don't see. So um, at least uh, <laughs> write a textual representation, you can hide it, for sighted users, but blind users need text to say like, this is a save button, because otherwise there's no indication what the button does to them. 
there's more. I said, use semantic HTML, never use a diff, because a diff ha is literally no meaning. Um, a button to, uh, has the meaning, I'm a button. I can be pressed, and things will happen. Um, for links, just try to keep the links as plain as possible, because that will actually allow people to know where they are going, uh, and they can decide whether they want to go to that link or not. Um, that's very polite of you. And, but you still also need to do the contrast, um, the classic uh, accessibility, as it's called. There are, luckily, helper tools available. But you need two kinds of helper tools. You need a linter for your JSX, but since most of the DOM is built at runtime, more or less, uh, a linter can never catch anything. So you also need a tool to check the generated DOM as you have built your site. So first of all, you should read the React Accessibility doc. It's actually quite good. Uh, <coughs> then linting. You can get tangled in lints. Um, there is a very useful plugin called ESLint plugin G GSXA11Y. If somebody has a more catchy name, that would be great. Um, but it describes what it does. It is a helper. Um, it will actually integrate really well with uh, IDEs. It will tell you what ARIA things you should put in, and it will check. There's about 30 rules that it currently checks. Um, you can configure those rules. It has IDE support for most of the current um, uh, editors that people like to use. And uh, your accessibility issues become build warnings. So it's really helpful. I would recommend installing it. Then to check the, uh, the, uh, the output DOM, there is React uh, X. So there's a special X component. X is an uh, accessibility checker. And there's a special version um, for that user that is made for React. And it will tell you what you haven't done. It will tell you, hey, you have a button, but nobody has a clue uh, who is not uh, seeing an icon what it actually does. So it will act literally tell you, you only have an icon on your button. Shame on you. Um, please provide textual ARIA labels for it. One of the most useful things you can do, because people don't like testing with screen readers because it's really tiring work, just test with your keyboard. If you are sure that you can reach all of your site or your app using just tap, shift tap, enter, and the arrow keys, you're 95% there. It's like it's something that is uh, extremely useful to do, and then you only have to do the screen reader uh, full test if you are like, really under scrutiny by government or other rules, but um, because also screen reader testing, yeah, it is a skill and it's hard. Uh, maybe you don't have a blind developer. They are, of course, experts at it, but please make sure that your app is keyboard accessible. That means there are no submenus where you can't get out of, which is one of the most common errors uh, that people are getting into. Um, and helper things have been announced. There is a, a React ARIA live announcer. It's uh, completely functional. Um, it's at this GitHub address, and it takes care of actually getting uh, a, uh, a hook to the top component and announcing your error messages. So you can style it any way you want, but you can use it in your projects to announce things, and it will take care of all the difficult mechanics. Really useful. You could use uh, a set of components. Uh, I haven't checked with um, what you are using, um, what, uh, semantic. semantic. Uh, I've checked Gromit OI. They are doing a great job. It's beautiful, and they have uh, good accessibility. Uh, not perfect, but good. I will try to check uh, a little bit more on uh, semantic as well. And there's also uh, Watsock Bootstrap React. It's been just released as a beta two weeks ago. It has extremely strict ac uh, accessibility compliance. Uh, it's not beautiful. But maybe it's open source, so maybe we can steal things from their technique, because their focus is 100% compliance. 
um, but they, their designers, uh, well, but their accessibility is spot on, and that's here. Uh, I hope I've given you enough pointers. This will be online, and I hope you will, from now on, create accessible JavaScript apps, because that will be lovely for everybody. Thank you. <laughs>